tears for all we lost on 9-11. Never forget. Hi everybody. This is going to be a somewhat serious video because I do not think we should forget 9-11. It's 20 years. It affected me directly as it affected many people directly. Some, a lot of people can remember that day and what they did on that day. My son graduated college in 2001. Pace University, which is downtown New York City. He had worked all his internships in finance and worked in the World Trade Center, several companies. Now the World Trade Center was made up of a, a few buildings, not just the two that got hit. On that day, he worked across the way from Merrill Lynch. They heard the first plane had hit the one building so he went downstairs to see what was going on, leaving his phone at his desk. The second plane hit. He saw the whole thing happen. He took off running. He didn't know, he said to me later, he didn't know if it was they were gonna keep building, hitting buildings, so he took off. Leaving this phone, like I said, at his desk, Meanwhile, I'm at work. I work next to the transit police. I worked for the railroad and we got word right away. When the second build uh, was hit, we went into shutdown. The transit police who was next door, well, next door was a couple office, a couple, the office over next to us. I worked in payroll, let me watch on the, their TVs what was happening because they knew my son worked in that vicinity. And I was okay because I knew that he wasn't in the two that got hit. But forgetting that his friends were in the building. I know I shouldn't laugh, but uh, I, I don't want to go into stories of how they got out or they were, they all got out. They were safe, but he had worked in those two buildings at one point. So, um, I really panicked when the buildings start to crumble. I was like, I don't know where he is. What if he gets hit by the debris? Tried to call him, no answer. So um, they eventually let us go from work. I was the last person off Route 3. I lived in New Jersey, or I worked for New Jersey Transit. I lived in New Jersey, in Lynnhurst, right across the river from, I could see the Twin Towers from my bedroom window every day. So I remember when I got off Route 3, they closed it behind me. I was on, I was really, there was hardly anybody on Route 3. I was surrounded by police cars and military, you know, vehicles, etc. I got home. Like I said, I wasn't sure where he was. But while I was still at work, I received a phone call. This gentleman called me and he goes, you know, Jerry's mom which I have to laugh at today because as he goes, you don't know me, but I own a photography store near the World Trade Center. I gathered names as people were running away from the scene and names and numbers. And I said, I'll call your relatives and let them know you're safe because my son took off. He just ran it along the river until he could jump on a ferry going across the river to bring her back to New Jersey. So I knew he was okay. 
I didn't know where he was. He did eventually get home. He got across the river. Somebody gave him a ride to the house. So everybody seemed to come together. When he walked in the door, he was still living with me at the time. He just graduated college, was getting himself settled. I almost passed out from relief. So he was okay. Later on, we found out that um, his friends were okay. I forgot his best friend worked in one of the buildings, but he was okay. I won't go into all those particulars, what happened. So um, he was smart. His boss got mad at him later for just taking off, but I thought that was a smart thing to do. He got his phone replaced later. That was no big thing. But I remember my brother got stuck in Milwaukee. He was visiting ballparks with friends. We have our family, we do that. We go to different ballparks. Of course, there was no planes out. He wound up renting a car a couple of days later and driving back to New Jersey. So, you know, and then Jerry eventually went back to work. They moved the, um, the work to New Jersey for a while along the waterfront. And then he eventually went back to the building in New York, but they didn't stay there long because there was damage to the building. On a year later, on 9-11-2002, I took a plane flight and I flew on that day to show I was not afraid. And I flew down to Orlando, Florida, which is funny because I only live an hour and a half away from Orlando now. I remember getting interviewed and a photo was taken of everyone on the plane asking us if we felt safe, you know, taking a plane on 9-11. The plane was half full, but we still took the plane down. Also, 2001, a couple months later after 9-11, they still held the New York City Marathon. And I had been doing the marathon every year with the Achilles track team. And we did the marathon that year. They went ahead with it. And I remember getting interviewed by German TV, a, a film crew from Germany. I don't know if it was ever broadcast, because they asked the same question. Are you afraid? You know, why are you still doing the marathon? And we said, no, we're going to show we're not afraid. So, uh, that's 9-11 memories for me. Not good. Um, I could not look out my bedroom window for months later because all I saw was smoke. So I kept my blinds closed. We were right across the river from the Twin Towers. I have many memories of the Twin Towers going there. There was all this shopping underneath one of the buildings. I, I used to go up to Windows of the World. You know, I haven't been in that new building they built, Freedom Tower or whatever they call it. But uh, I don't think we should ever forget. And that's all I'm gonna say. And if this bothers some people watching this, I'm sorry. But, and I'm sure a lot of people have stories to tell. So take care. I'll probably do another video tomorrow to tell you uh, the news. I have different things going on. I shouldn't laugh. You know, you know me, something's always going on. But uh, don't forget, please, don't forget.